Okay, in this video we're going to talk about finding integrals of um, products of sine and sine or cosine and cosine or sine and cosine uh, where the arguments are different. And this is kind of neat because these look like they'd be uh, really hard, but it turns out they're not as long as you remember what you need to remember. So what we need to remember are the sum and difference formulas for both sine and cosine. Um, so let's start with cosine. So we got cosine of x plus y. So cosine of x plus y is going to be cosine of x, cosine of y, and then minus sine of x, sine of y. Um, so you have to remember when you're dealing with cosine, the sines alternate. So if you start with a cosine of x plus y, we're going to have a minus in the formula. And then similarly, when we do cosine of x minus y, there's a minus um, there. So when we get to the formula, there's going to be a plus between the terms. So cosine x, cosine y, and then plus sine of x, sine y. OK, so that's for um, cosine. And then uh, I'm going to pick up the speed here on sine. So we need to know sine of x plus y. Sine of x plus y is going to be sine x cosine y plus cosine x sine y. And so the signs don't alternate there. So if you're dealing with sine, it's going to be plus and then plus. And then sine of x minus y, same deal. It's going to be sine x cosine y minus cosine x sine y. OK, so those are the formulas that you need to remember. And then what we're going to do is, if you look at them, uh, there are ways we can combine these and make good things happen for us. So for example, if we're looking at just the cosine of x plus y and the cosine of x minus y, you can see that if you add them together, um, you're going to end up with the sine things just cancel. So we end up with, really end up with 2 cosine x cosine y. Um, but in general, we get something involving cosine x cosine y, and we can use that. So that's good. Um, if you go back and then just subtract them in a kind of a clever way, um, then what we're going to end up with is uh, something in terms of sine and sine, so that'll be useful. And then if we look at the sine formulas, if we just add those together, um, we end up with something we can use for sine x cosine y. So that's why we need to know these formulas. Um, and now I'm going to do an example of one of each. So let's look at it. So we've got the integral of cosine of 2x cosine of 5x dx. So this is cosine cosine, so I know that I need to start with um, the formulas for cosine of x plus y and cosine of x minus y. And if I subtract them from each other, nope, sorry, if I add them to each other, not subtract, um, this is what happens. We get cosine of x plus y and then plus cosine of x minus y. And then that equals 2 cosine x cosine y. And then the parts that involve sine just canceled each other out. Okay, so we can use this because if I divide everything by 2, I get just cosine x cosine y on the right-hand side. So I'm going to rewrite my integral as uh, 1 half, that's where the 2 is, and then it'll be the integral of, so the first thing is going to be cosine of x plus y. So x in this case is 2x, so the first thing is 2x, and then it's plus 5x, and then uh, we have a plus between them, and then it'll be cosine of uh, the first First thing is 2x, and then minus the second thing, which is 5x. Close that, and dx. And we can simplify this. So it's 1 half, the integral of, that's cosine of 7x, and then uh, plus cosine of, so it's, it's really cos cosine of negative 3x, but if you remember, um, cosine is an even function. So since cosine is an even function, uh, the cosine of negative 3x is exactly the same as the cosine of 3x because in general the cosine of negative theta equals the cosine of theta. So I rewrote that because I didn't want to deal with that negative sign. And now I can just integrate. So this will be 1 half. Um, integrating cosine of 7x, there will be a 1 7th. And then the integral of cosine is sine of 7x. And then plus, there will be the 1 half again. And then uh, we need a 1 -third. And then the integral of cosine is sine of 3x. And then don't forget plus c. And then finally, we just clean this up and get 1 14th sine of 7x plus 1 6th the sine of 3x. And then plus c. Okay, so that's an example where we have cosine times cosine. Let's look at sine times sine. So same basic idea. We're gonna, we need to get sine and sine. So that's the two formulas for cosine. And in this case, instead of adding them, what I really want to do is I want to subtract them. So I started off with cosine of x minus y over cosine of x plus y. 
So I'm just going to subtract them here. That'll give me cosine of x minus y, and then minus cosine of x plus y. And then the idea here is that the cosines are going to cancel out, and I end up with sine xy minus negative sine xy. So that's going to be 2 sine x sine y. I definitely said that wrong, but uh, that's what we end up with. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to replace the integrand by using this new formula. So there will be a 1 half on the outside, the integral of, so it's going to be the cosine of the first thing minus the second thing, so 8x minus 3x. And then I ended up with a minus between them. It's cosine of first thing plus second thing, so 8x plus 3x dx, and now it's just a, a normal integral, so it's 1 half the integral of cosine of 5x minus the cosine of 11x, and then dx, and so this is, we get a 1 half, then I need a 1 fifth for the chain rule, and then the integral of cosine is sine of 5x, and then it will be minus, we need that 1 half that distributes, we need a 1 eleventh, and then the integral of cosine is sine of 11x, and then plus c, obviously. And then this just cleans up to 1 tenth sine of 5x minus 1 22nd sine of 11x, and then plus c. Okay, so one more example we're going to do, which will be a sine and a cosine. So we have the integral of sine of 7x cosine of 3x dx. So to get sine cosine, instead of using the two cosine formulas, I'm going to use the two sine formulas. So that is sine of x plus y and sine of x minus y. And if you look at it, the way that you can combine these is you can add them together. So if I add these together, I will get sine of x plus y plus sine of x minus y is equal to, and then adding them together, the cosine sine thing, uh, well, one of the cosine sine things cancels and the other one stays, so we're actually just going to get 2 sine x cosine y. Okay, so this we can use. So I'm going to end up rewriting my integral as 1 half the integral of, so it's sine of first thing plus second thing, so 7x plus 3x. And then our formula ended up with a plus in between these things, so plus sine of first thing minus second thing, so 7x minus 3x, and then dx, and we can rewrite this to just kind of clean it up, so it's 1 half sine of 10x, and then plus sine of 4x dx, and now we integrate, so we'll have that 1 half that's hanging out there, I need a 1 tenth, the integral of sine is negative cosine, of 10x in this case, and then it's plus, we still have that 1 half, we get a 1 fourth by the chain rule, and then the integral of sine is negative cosine of 4x in this case, and then plus c, and then we can just clean up the whole thing. So we get negative 1 20th cosine of 10x plus, uh, sorry, minus 1 eighth because it's negative, positive, positive, um, cosine of 4x plus c. So there you go. That's how you can integrate um, all these weird products of sines and cosines or cosines and cosines or sines and sines. It all comes down to knowing the sum and difference formula for sine and the sum and difference formula for cosine. Hope you found this helpful and good luck.